Hello everyone and welcome to another eight and a half by 11 inch scrapbook layout process. I have some photos in front of me and you might recognize them as part of a series I've been doing on this holiday album. And today I want to show you how I'm going to manipulate a pattern paper that originally I had selected for this page. I have previously done a whole sort on this album. You might have seen some of these videos and I had selected all the patterns that I was going to use and they're all from one collection. So I'm really trying to stay true to that and this was the pattern paper that I pulled out for these photos because I thought that it would work if I cut this down and put my photos across in a linear fashion and hid the trees with my photos and then I was going to use the other page for the other side but the more I kept looking at this the more I struggled with how I was going to make this paper pattern work. And the colors don't quite work either. The theme doesn't work. I was going to bring in some of this pattern paper because it replicated these tree icons here. But this is a coastline on Phillip Island and it really didn't lend itself to the trees. But the more I looked at these photos, the more I liked this part of the pattern paper with it because it has those gray tones. There is a very subtle cross on here and I I quite like if I take all of this pattern away and try and hide some of it up. Sometimes I can sort of visualize things if I hide this very strong element here and I put my photos with this pattern paper. I really like how that looks together. I don't actually want to destroy this pattern though so I am going to just try something here and hope that I like the end result because I'm going to rip into this pattern paper and see if I can manipulate this to work on my layout. So I've just got out my ruler and I'm going to rip the paper but I'm going to leave this part of the paper intact for another project because I might use this later on. Not necessarily in this album but I really do love how this looks. So I'm just going to go for this and sort of hold my breath and hope that this works. So I'm just ripping my paper along the edge of this. I'm being a little bit gentle because I don't want to mess it up too much and I'm going slowly. So I've got one triangle here and now I'm going to bring in the other side, the other piece of pattern paper that goes with this. And I'm going to do exactly the same thing. And it doesn't matter, I don't think, if my triangles aren't going to be exactly the same. But I am going to leave a little bit of this grey pattern paper here. And I need to start up in this corner. And I'm holding my ruler fairly firmly here. I was going to cut this with some scissors because I can't cut this with my trimmer because this angle is too much. I think I'm going to like using just these two pieces for my layout. Now obviously one triangle is bigger than the other. I've got these two pieces left over. I'm just going to put those aside. I'm just going to bring in my base pages here. These are white daisy and they're cut to eight and a half by 11. So this triangle here measures at about 10 and a quarter inches. And this one is taller, but I don't know if I'm going to leave that like that or if I might change it so that the wash of the paper runs the same way. There is a textured type wash on this. So if I rotate it this way, the wash is going vertically. And on this one, the wash is going horizontally. So maybe I'll see if I want to do it this way so that this pattern is consistent or it might work better with the photos if it's in a horizontal direction because I'm working with scenery photos here and I'm thinking with the line of the clouds and the horizon and the waves and everything the wash is going to look better if it runs in a horizontal format. So I think that's going to be my best bet. So it is a little bit of a process of trying to work out how to make a pattern paper work for you thinking with the way these photos are orientated I might put them on this side because I quite quite like having this solid area of this landscape photo on the right side and then I might put these photos like this. Bring this up a little bit. I've got a few little icons that I have saved. Pattern papers and the stickers and die cuts are all from The World Is Yours. There was a cut above kit and there was also a paper collection with this and that's the collection that I've been using throughout this project. 
some thinking. This arrow might look a bit fun pointing in towards us. Quite like the sunglasses. We did have a photo with all of us with sunglasses on. Just Rosemary's got the sunglasses on here, but I think that will work quite well. But I'm liking how that's looking. But I think what I want to do is add a little bit of depth to this page and bring in some of this color here. I've got some off cuts here. I think mocha is going to be too strong. Definitely espresso. That fits in really well. So let me just slide this underneath here to see if I can just work out whether or not this is going to work. It's not going to be quite long enough to slide a whole piece, but I'll have a photo over here. So I can distress the edge of this a little bit and then cut it up to extend across the top. So it'll look like it'll run all the way through. And I really like the addition of this color. I'm just going to move this aside so I can create some paper fluff. You've seen me do this many times before. I'm just roughing up the edges a little bit. It's exposing the white core of the cardstock. And I think it'll add a lot of texture to this page for this rugged coastline. So you do get quite a bit of fluff, but I think this on the edge of here, I'm going to actually tear this one up a little bit more too, just to make it a little bit more rugged. You just need to go in small sections and just hold it like I'm doing here. And then when you get down to this edge, you can just go back the other way. But I think those two edges are going to look really nice and work really well with my rugged photos. I'm just going to bring that down a little bit to have a look. So I'm going to go ahead and do another piece of espresso because I think this is going to work going all the way across. So I just need another 12 inch strip of espresso and then I might do some double matting on these photos as well with some espresso paper. So I've torn my espresso pieces and I've got it roughly laid out here. But before I adhere this down, I want to add some stamping to it. And I am thinking what I'm going to do is continue this triangle across to the right page. So I've actually torn another piece so that I can put that across there because I think that'll provide a little bit more continuity. I know it's wider here than it is at the top there, but I actually don't mind that. It just adds a point of difference to the layout. So now I'm going to do some stamping on this. I'll just move this one off to the side. So I'm going to bring in some scratch paper so that I can go off the edge. And I'm going to do some stamping with this where I'm going to take some of the ink off the actual image before I stamp it down. So I'm going to use espresso ink and I'm going to do some stamp layering with this as well. So I'm just inking this up. And then I'm going to bring in a tissue and just take some of that ink away and stamp onto my page here. And I love how it's a little bit lighter here and darker down in this area where I didn't take the ink away. This set is one that I have had for a very long time, Tommy Scrapbooking Workshop. I have a feeling this was released in the very first year that Close to My Heart came to Australia. So that would be 10 years ago, but I kept it because I do love this image here. And I think it suits the photos that I'm using really, really well. So I've just inked this up again and I'm going to take away some of that and then I'm going to put this up in this corner up here. And then I'm going to do that again. one here. Now I know this has got definite lines around it but I'm going to soften that with some other stamping. I've got a stamp set here that is from one of the Close to My Heart album retreats. So I'm going to do the same treatment with this compass and I'm just going to stamp a couple of these and have them layered over the edges. I'm taking some of the ink off and I love this compass. I think it's a really gorgeous element. 
to put onto pages, especially for a, a windy, this was an incredibly windy day. It was a little bit colder. I wasn't quite dressed appropriately, so I had to borrow a jacket because I didn't realize we were going to head here when we headed out in the morning. I'm just going to put this back on here so I can see how this is going. And I love how that's looking. And I'm going to bring in the photos as well. I think what I want to do is extend this all the way along the edge here. And I need to do one up in this corner as well because I'm bringing this triangle cut over to this side. And then I'm going to do some more stamping over the top of these areas as well. Well, so I'm just looking at the stamp sets that I've brought out. I've got this compass here that is from Adventure Badges and I know that I have used this on another layout in this album but I actually don't mind having a repetition when it comes to stamping for these sorts of travel type photos. I think it makes the album look a little bit cohesive when you start bringing in the same sort of stamps, the same tone colour papers and the same images from a set. So this one's going to be a little bit darker, but I like how it's bringing just a little bit more depth to this and it's filling in some of the spaces. Bring this back in to have another look. And quite often you would look at a gray and then think bringing in a brown with this, it really doesn't go. But I think these two colors work really well with my photo choices here. And I'm going to repeat this same stamping onto the left page, but I want to bring in a little bit of ink on this just to blend these all together. So I'm going to do a little bit of a practice here. Tap off quite a bit and bring some ink over top. I think that's going to make the background look a little less stark because I am working with White Daisy here. So all I need to remember is to tap off. I would know to come up from this edge here because that's where my triangle is going to be. and it's giving my stamps a place to land. So I'll just bring this up to the camera so you can see that I've got the ink blending going on here and how that brings everything together. Whereas here, it's just looking a little bit too stark. So I'm gonna continue doing this for this page and then I'll repeat that for the left page as well. So one final check before I move on to the left page because if I don't like what I've done here, I can always turn this page over and start again. Photos back in again and put them down. They look really good. I brought in my splatter box because I'm just going to do some splatters over this with espresso ink and I'm also going to do it. This is the left page that I did off camera and I did this on purpose because I wanted to show you what happens if you don't tap your brush off. These are pounce marks that you can get. So if I'd started that on this side, this would be quite visible. But because I've got my pattern piece that's going across here, you can't see that at all. So to do my splatters, I am just going to use some espresso ink and smoosh this down onto my all-purpose mat. I'm going to spray it with just a little bit of water. And then I've got my fan brush and I might need to add even more ink to this and possibly a little bit more water than what I did before just to move the ink around a bit more. So I think this is gonna work a little bit better. Yep, that looks fabulous. So I'm really happy with how that's looking. And then I need to do it over this section as well. It was a very windy day and the waves were crashing and it was quite stormy looking. So I think putting the splatters in is going to work quite well and it also brings all these stamped images together. I've got my photos adhered directly to the layout here. I decided not to go with a double mat. I didn't mind the white edge to these. This is because I've got these white stickers here that I'm going to put on. And when I'm looking at these, they are looking fairly stark with all this stamping and everything that is going on. I want to bring this into the sticker elements. So I'm going to just sort of replicate a little bit of what I've done here, but onto the actual stickers. And I'm hoping I like what I do because I don't have spares of these. So let's see how we go. And for this one, instead of dabbing it off with the tissue, I'm actually going to do generational stamping here because I really don't want it to be too strong. So I'm going in with third generation ink onto this and it's a little bit too light so I can see that I need to do second generation. So stamp off. I'm going to try and line this back up where I had it. And I like the look of this much better. It, you can see that it's bringing in a bit of texture and taking away the starkness of the white sticker. 
And I'm going to stamp this one all the way across. So I will need to get my head over this so that I can line it up. Another one here. And it just adds a beautiful touch, I think, to this sticker piece. I'm going to rotate my stamp image because I don't want this Arctic Circle sort of reference here that's on this stamp coming across the bottom here. And go back across this way just with the top edge of this. And I really love how that looks. So I'm going to replicate this onto this sticker as well. And this is where my journaling is going to go. It's not going to quite fit all the way across. And I am going to go over top of where the sunglasses are as well, just to bring in that texture. It just takes away the white of this background when I've got all of this stamping here creating a bit of a mood. So I need to remember to stamp off first. I nearly didn't then. I'm just replicating that across here. So effectively, I'm using this map image as a background stamp. And I've got an arrow. Here it is. And this one, I'm going to do first generation stamping on it because it is a solid colour. You can see it's not really picking up too much over the top of the letters here. So I'm just going to try and see if this will stand out a little bit. So I think it'll be fun to have the arrow with this image on here as well. I'll just let the ink soak in a little bit and then see what I've got here. That looks really cool. I'm really happy with how that looks. I wish I had more of these arrow stickers from this kit. Now I'm going to put these onto my layout. So let's bring that back in. You can see that I've got the cohesiveness running all the way across here with the extended part of that triangle. I did match up the stamping across the page. I'm just going to use this sticker as is and center it over, or maybe I will put it, I think I quite like it, with the line of the sticker on the edge of this photo. I was trying to center it, but it just looks like I'm trying to make it match. I could have it all the way over to the left if I had lined up my photos just a little bit more. But I think what I'm gonna do is align it up to the edge, right edge of these. And then I'm going to bring in my arrow, which I absolutely love. It just looks so cool. I love being able to do this repetitive layered stamping and then bringing in these stamped images to match the other elements. I don't know if I should put it this way or this way. No, I think I'm just going to have it coming down like this. Love how that looks. Do my journaling on here. And when I'm going over top of something, I will flatten these pieces out a bit just with my fingers so that when I adhere things down, it doesn't get that rippled sort of look underneath so much. I'm just about done with this. And I think what I'm going to do is just add a few little camera stamps. And I'm going to offset these and do them in first and second generation ink. And have some coming off the edge as well. I do love doing this sort of technique. I'm even going to put one in this little corner here and then I'm going to put one here and come off the edge there as well. I think that just adds a little bit of fun to this. We were laughing so much it was so windy. Most of the time my hair was all over my face and I could hardly see what was happening but I think this just adds the final perfect little touch here. I'm going to put one up the top as well. You go half on the sticker and a little bit off. So now I've got four, so I have to find another spot for them. I'm just going to go off the edge with the first generation and come back in with the second. So that's my layout all done. I know you might have been looking at me tear into this paper and possibly thinking that I shouldn't, but I really did like this mink paper with the wash on here and it works really well with my photos. So I did want to use it for this page. This is a bit of a tricky paper to use. So for me, I would rather use this part of the paper on my layout than keep saving this piece. I'm not gonna throw this away. It'll come in handy for something else. 
but because it had the trees on here, I know I could have put that on there because there is greenery, but there are no trees in my photos. This is quite a rugged coastline, and I think this has turned out really well. The photos really pop off the page. If I had used too strong a pattern paper with this, the photos would have got lost a little bit, I feel. Eight and a half by 11 is one of my favorite formats to scrapbook on. I hope you've enjoyed what you've seen me do today. Now I can slide this into my album and move on to the next layout for this album. Thank you so much for tuning in. As always, happy crafting and bye for now. Just a little side note, I know I've already signed off, but if you're still watching, you might have noticed that I didn't continue the stamping across onto this side. So this was looking a little bit cut off here with the white edge and a little bit of splatter. I've continued the stamping all the way across here. So I just needed to add a few little images down here just to carry this across and make it look like everything all belonged. Sometimes you just don't notice that you haven't continued something or you've missed something on your layout. But that's what I love about scrapbooking. You can always come back to it and add what's needed.